Again, still awkward seeing Edelgard. Part 2. Azure Moon. Verdant Rain I wasn't moon. going to record another one, but Our I need to know what happens. Paths. I've got to know what happens. I'm sucked into this story. The Kingdom Army has captured Fort Mercius. Managing troops from the now stable Western Kingdom and former Alliance territory, the Kingdom Army returns to Garagmok to regroup and reorganize its forces. With sufficient might to challenge the Empire, the Kingdom Army finalizes their plans to march on Enbar, the Imperial capital. Okay. Ah, there you are. His Highness was looking for you. Where is he? He's gone ahead and started interrogating the prisoner. Viscount Kleiman's man. He said he'd like for you and I to be present as well. Will you come with me? Gladly. I cannot overlook your reckless remarks. Are you really so keen to lose your head? I only did what I believed was right. I swear to the goddess that I'm not lying. Amidst the turmoil of the tragedy, Lady Patricia was supposed to be the only one who was unharmed. We had been given orders ahead of time to not approach her carriage. <coughs> was Patricia an accomplice? Of course not. What would my stepmother have had to gain from such a... Remember what Cornelia told you. Perhaps Lady Patricia would have done anything to return to the Empire. To her husband and daughter. What exactly are you implying? Remember what that woman For the told past you. Few months, I've been spying on lords who defected to the Empire in order to investigate rumors about Lady Patricia. Cornelia's words were true. The two of them, I am afraid they conspired together after all. Enough of this nonsense. You say she wished to return home? That isn't nearly enough reason to cause such a tragedy. Agreed. I do not intend to imply that the two of them were solely responsible for the whole affair. There were likely nobles who opposed the king, or potentially someone who wanted to throw the kingdom into chaos. The Empire and people like Solon and Kronya had their motives too. So my stepmother joined with them to cause the tragedy. Is that what you believe? Unfortunately. Ultimately, this is just conjecture based on the evidence at hand. I have no idea what their true intentions were. I see. We will hear what this man has to say. For now. My lord had long felt that King Lambert's radical ways were dangerous. At the time, he was approached with an offer to take part in the incident at Dusker. Define radical. My lord loves his homeland. To me, he embodied justice. We were only doing what we thought was right. And so, in the name of justice, he caused massacre upon massacre out of love for his homeland. You murdered your own king, killed our soldiers, and involved innocent citizens. And yet you have the gall to speak of justice! I am only standing before you now, because I could no longer bear the weight of my sins. Do you regret your actions? No. I accept your hatred, and even the punishment of death. But I still believe it was a massacre in the name of justice. Oh, I will gladly see you killed. Gilbert, lock this man in his cell. Are you not going to kill him? Not yet. I will make that decision once I have had time to consider this man's definition of justice. Yes, Your Highness. Might be more grueling to make him sit in a tiny little cell for the rest of his miserable life. Are you okay, Dimitri? No. I cannot say that I am. Tell me, Professor, how well do you remember your father, Gerald? Honestly, not very well. 
I figured as much. Even the memory of those who pass away is taken from those they left behind. Little by little, year by year. To be honest, I cannot really remember my stepmother's... <sighs> that woman's smile. Nor the sound of her voice. I always told myself that I would not allow my mind to forget. And yet, all I can recall with clarity is her gazing away, so forlorn. Did my stepmother wish to go home so badly that she would kill father and me? Kill her false family? Home to her own blood. Her true family. I don't have answers for that. I suppose it doesn't make any difference now. I am asking you questions you could not possibly know the answer to. I am finished with thoughts like that. I am finally able to go on living without clinging to hate. If I truly treasure those who have died, then I must earnestly atone for my sins. Father, Glenn, all of the soldiers who have fallen, the people of Dusker who still suffer persecution. The only atonement I can offer them now is to take responsibility for this broken kingdom that has been entrusted to me. True. That is why I feel that I must meet with Edelgard and try to talk to her. Do you think it is a fool's errand? Honestly, I think so too. But I must swallow you have to try and grudges, our whole history really, and ask her about this future that she sees. She is your sister. You have to try. What she aims for once her domination is complete. What kind of justice she clings to as she fights. And why she felt it necessary to start this war. I believe that asking her these things is the true responsibility I have been tasked with as king. How will you accomplish that? We will march our troops to the Imperial capital. But before any battle begins, we will set up camp nearby and send a messenger. I will tell her that I need to speak with her in a safe place, without any weapons or troops. As to whether or not she will agree to my request, well, that rests solely on Edelgard. I'm certain she'll agree. I would like to believe that as well. You know, Professor, when we fought in Ferdiad, Cornelia mocked me and called me pitiful. But even if it is true that my stepmother never loved me, I am not to be pitied. After all, I have allies and dear friends who care for me. And now, I also have you by my side. Okay. That's nice. Let's rest. Whose birthday? Uh, manually.
still weird to see that. It is. It is weird. Wow. Really? I thought this... I see how this... Alright, that... Sure, why not? What? Want to cast some magic? Sure. That was... That was... I appre... I appre... How best... I'd like you to explain something. Sure. Soldiers have been unhappy with the food lately, and the complaints have are bad have been bad for morale. What should we do? Obviously, we need a better cook. I don't think you understand the situation. And who's Manuela's birthday? Uh, just give some flowers. I'm a little uncomfortable with Manuela, okay? Okay, just I find her a little uncomfortable. She also voices the her actress also voices Ash Ketchum. <laughs> I will enjoy that. So she voices a hormonal pain in the neck and a Pokemon ch and a child. You can count on me. We did well. Oh, well enough, you say? There must be more I can do. Technique never betrays. What's the tournament this month? Sword! Let's do some seminars. I'm gonna have Felix perform in the sword tournament, or maybe I should do it. I always was a quick. Automatic. Because frankly, I can't really be bothered. Well, yeah, you keep saying that, but you keep getting perfect. I'll do my best with this. Aha! Uh -huh. Excalibur, nice. I always was a quick. Uh, rest because literally next is week is my last one. So that'll get automatically once again. Any day now, game. You did well enough, I suppose. I'm starting to get it. Looks like I'm getting it. This time I'm going to explore because of the sword tournament. Oh, 
on some support conversations. Let's see. Oh, quite a few. Dimitri and Felix. I have a question for you. Answer quickly before my hand slips and I cut you in half. Must you be angsty all the time? Always so ominous. Well, what is it, Felix? Sometimes you have an animal's face, contorted with anger and bloodlust. At other times, a man's with a friendly smile. Which is your true face? Do not waste your breath on questions with such obvious answers. They are both the real me. My father, my friends, Glenn. They all meant a great deal to me. And they were all brutally slaughtered. I alone survived. If I do not shoulder the anguish and regret they must have felt, who will? <laughs> so that's how you justify your atrocities. What do you mean? I will fulfill my duty to the late king. My old man used to say that over and over like a mantra. How oh, nauseating. No one seems to understand. The dead won't acknowledge your loyalty. They don't care. What a load of bunk it is, pretending to serve a corpse. You're serving your own ego. You are wrong. No, I'm not. The dead are dead. The living are living. You have to respect that boundary. If you keep stringing gravestones around your neck, you'll snap. That's still, a fair point. I cannot forget them, nor can I let them go. Then keep those thoughts to yourself. If you're too weak to do that, abandon your throne. Become a gravekeeper. Felix. I'm not immune to emotion, you know. Far from it. I haven't gone a day without questioning why my father and brother had to die while I survived. I'll bear this pain until the day I die, but I refuse to wallow in it. I have more important things to do than blubber for my whole life. That's an interesting perspective. <laughs> you know, Felix, you really are growing more and more like your brother. Mourn the dead, but do, but do not wallow in your own misery. Always so sarcastic and constantly looking for a fight. But deep inside, more than anyone, you... What are you getting at? Oh. It's nothing. But allow me to thank you. Your perspective has opened my eyes. I. <laughs> Not my intention. I couldn't stand the pathetic look on your face. That's all. I see. If you say so, then we will leave it at that. They have an interesting relationship. Dimitri and da 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 Flane. Why are you out and about so late, Dimitri? Ah, uh, hello, Flame. I could ask you the same thing. Me? I was feeling restless and came here to think. I see. I'm here for the same reason. <laughs> How funny. But, are you feeling well? You look fairly pale. It's nothing. I just have a bit of a headache. Oh my. Headaches are quite troublesome, are they not? I am sure it will subside soon. Actually, I am quite talented when it comes to healing magic. If you will allow me, I will have you feeling better in no time. That's kind of you, but I'm fine. But... why not? Have I offended you somehow? This headache is something I've dealt with for a while now. Ever since my family and friends were murdered before my eyes, I must never forget that day. I must never allow their deaths to be forgotten. I feel this headache is a reminder of sorts, of those I failed to protect, and of their murderers who still roam free. I see. That would explain your somber demeanor. Still, I do not agree with all you are saying. I feel that if I were your father, or any of your dear friends whom you lost, I would want you to let go of me eventually. I would never want someone whom I care deeply for to be pained by the loss of me for eternity. And I doubt they would want that either. Perhaps. Unfortunately, they have left this world, so I can no longer ask their preference. We cannot ask them directly, 
but we can imagine how they might have felt. You know who they were as people. As for me, if I am ever to be but a memory in your future, I want you to remember me in a way that brings you joy. I would want you to smile when you recalled me, to feel warmed by the notion that I cherished your company. I cannot imagine I am the only one who feels this way. Surely, anyone who loved another would wish only for their peace and happiness. <sighs> I... must apologize. I was out of line, clearly. I must get some rest now. Please do not stay up too late yourself. Good night, Flane. And... thank you. <laughs> Okay. Felix and Flane. Flane? What's that you're hiding? Oh no. My surprise is spoiled. I had brought some fruits for you to cut up in addition to the firewood. I thought some variation might prove amusing. No, I'm not doing that again. I've got better uses for my sword than chopping up fruit and firewood. I cannot imagine what could be better than chopping fruit. <laughs> chopping up my enemies. This girl is a treasure. You say that as though you have many enemies. You are a treasure, Flame. Felix, be nice to her. So you would rather chop people than firewood. Is that it? That's not how I put it. But a blade's purpose is to kill. Not necessarily. I have a knife. Pocket knife. That blade's purpose is to cut and to cut wood and rope. To chop wood, use an axe. To chop food, use a knife. It's simple. Surely it is not forbidden to use your sword for other things, like chopping fruit. Swords that cut inanimate objects are serving a much finer purpose than those that cut living beings. What a noble sentiment. But without a blade to cut down your enemies, you cannot win. That's a fair point. Those who are weak lose everything and they die. Those who are strong win and live on. I understand why you bulk at bloodshed, but you must know that it has a purpose. And what purpose might that be? A purpose. Let's just leave it at that. I'm not in the mood to debate you. I'll continue to wield my sword, and if necessary, cut down my enemies. He certainly is a stubborn one. Hello, Pop. Meet Kettle. Oh, but I love you, Flame. You are a treasure who must be protected. Dadu and Annette. Forgive me. <laughs> it's fine. Honestly, it's pretty funny when you think about it. I did not expect the horse to react so violently when I approached. No kidding. And I didn't expect the two of us to get covered in hay. Animals have never taken to me. It must be as you said. My face is the problem. I have not honed my smile well enough. I deeply regret the trouble I've caused you. Don't be ridiculous. And especially don't be sad. It's no trouble at all, I promise. Everyone makes mistakes. Isn't that what you've been trying to teach me? Yes, I suppose so. You are pretty scarred up, to do. You look like you've seen quite a lot. It does look like this will take a while to clean up. But if we work together, it'll be done in no time. I am truly sorry. Don't apologize. When it's your turn for stable duty, I'm happy to help. Really? Sure. And in return, you can help me out when I'm on kitchen duty. Of course. By the way, I tried out all that stuff you mentioned before, about how to not be a scatterbrain. I'm still pretty hopeless, but thanks to you, I'm making fewer mistakes. Try to focus on one thing at a time. It's probably not a good idea for me to be left alone around knives and boiling water, though. That's why it'll be really nice knowing you have my back. You have changed. Huh? You no longer fear approaching me for help. You simply ask. And now, when the need arises, I will rely on you, too. I genuinely like Dudu. He is a very kind person. Ash and Ingrid, okay.
There you are, Ingrid. Whoa, uh, hi, Ash. You seem excited. What's that you're holding? A book I found in town. I bought it for you. For me? Ash, this looks very costly. Antique books like this are never cheap. Wow, the cover is stunning, and the binding is still in fantastic condition. I drove a hard bargain. Still, I'll probably have to cut back on my spending for a while. <laughs> Why did you go to so much trouble? Because he likes you! It wasn't easy, but as soon as I came across this legend, I knew you had to read it too. Well then, I will read it. Oh, the knight on the cover looks striking. Fascinating, right? I was captivated from the moment I laid eyes on the cover. There's an aura of stoicism intermingled with beauty, even amid a gruesome battle. Wait, looking closer at the face, this knight is a woman. Yes, and she was a real historical figure. She was born into a noble family and bore a crest, but she was accepted into the king's service as a knight. She fought in many battles at her king's side, serving him all her life as his right hand. Oh, sorry, I, I've said too much. I didn't mean to spoil the story for you. I'm just so excited. I hope you enjoy it too. Thank you for the encouragement, Ash. Living as a knight is certainly not an easy task. I know it will mean much pain, strife, and heartache. But I still want to pursue that dream. Talking to you has reminded me. I'm not the type who gives up easily. That's the Ingrid I know. So to start, I'm going to read this book. Great! When you're finished and freshly inspired, we'll talk about becoming knights. Not the ones in stories, either. The real thing! I look forward to it, Ash. I don't think the romantic music really fits that. Oh my god, I get one with flame. I get to see this continue. Sylvain. Hi. Why do you look so down? But hey, if you're talking to me of your own accord, can I assume you've figured out I'm not a monster? I wanted to apologize about my treatment of you earlier, Sylvain. I am not normally one to put stock in such rumors. Nothing to be upset about. I mean... I've kind of earned that reputation. I've just... I've got this sickness. When I see a pretty girl, I can't stop myself from flirting with her. Like you, for instance. Sylvain? You stay away from her. She is a pure, innocent treasure. You stay away from her. Oh, I am so sorry to hear of your illness. Perhaps my magic will help heal you. You are a treasure! Huh? No, I didn't mean it like that. No? Are you not ill then? You know what? Let's just... Let's move on. Can I take this to mean everything is good between us? Of course. Sylvain, I look forward to getting to know you without the falsity of rumors. Great. Would you like to celebrate our new friendship by joining me for a meal? You would treat me to a feast? <laughs> that is very kind of you. A chance to spend time with a sweet girl like yourself? It's a pleasure. Your voice like birdsong. Your eyes clear as diamonds. But above all... You stay away from her. I'm drawn to your kind and loving heart. I am a captive to your charms, Flane. I hear that very frequently. Thank you. Yeah, I believe you. I guess a girl as cute as you would get a lot of compliments. Anyway, what type of meal were you considering, Sylvain? I would love some seafood, followed by a delicious cake! Oh, I am absolutely famished, as I often am. Shall we be on our way? <laughs> she's a tough one. Sheltered girls like her usually fall for that kind of stuff. But she's much too savvy. Even for a smooth talker like myself. She is naive. And precious. I love this girl. She is a treasure. She needs to be protected. And that's all the supports. Okay. And Shamir is in the training grounds. Okay. I'm thinking 
Ten years ago, Dagda and Bridget attacked the Empire from the west. Their final target was the capital. But they were countered at a port town long before they reached their destination. We spent a lot of time going back and forth, but at least we made it this far. Forty or higher, well, forty four and a forty eight. Well, they're using a training sword. Let's use Dimitri just because, well. He has more health, so Dimitri he also has more defense. It is done. This is kind of what I'm worried about because he is dodging. Come on to the next battle. I won't stop here. On to the next battle. A mortal savant. It is done. Is that all the fights? Nice work, Dimitri. Okay. Annette and Mercedes are here in the dining hall. Just outside, to the north. And there they are. We'll be heading for the capital soon. So much rests on this moment. Will the war really be over if we take the capital? May not right away, but for the most part, yes. You're probably right. I truly believe that a peaceful future is waiting at the end of all of this. I hope it is. I hope this is the final battle. Don't you, Professor? Yes. When the war is over, everyone will be busy with their own lives. But let's all meet up again someday. Right here, at Garrig Mach. You, His Highness, my father, our monastery friends, the knights, everyone. Well, our friends who are still alive, anyway. I wonder if it's even possible. All that matters is whether we choose to make it happen. I really hope that we do. Ooh, and I'll bake a bunch of desserts for it. Reunion sweets. All we have to do now is win. Let's get to it, Professor. He intends to speak to the Emperor? She's his stepsister, I know, but this seems risky. You're against it? No, I'm not. I'm sure he's thought it through. If the two can settle this diplomatically, that would be the best way out of this mess. No more bloodshed. Let's just hope he doesn't become so overwhelmed with emotion that he's unable to strike her down, should the need arise. You're good with magic, right, Manuela? Life can be t maybe, and I've got friends, Professor. Plenty of those. You should relax. relax. At this point. Yeah, just get to the drills. Magic, white magic. Okay.
outside, outside down the hall. There she is. Hello, treasure. I was born in Enbar. I heard. My mother and father met in a church there. Not too long after, I was brought into the world. I do not understand how war can happen in such a precious place. It is most regrettable. Hey. Please, let me consider. Our next battlefield. If you have any unfinished business here, you had best settle it before we depart. I knew I could count. Okay, so we are coming up on the final chapter. Uh, sure. Authority. There is still more. Before I do that. Fish? Okay. Yes. Sure. Let's catch a fish. A gobby. Okay, what do we have here? Professor, do you think Edelgard will show up? I hope so. Well, well. It's been a long time, Professor. And hello to you too, Dimitri. Edelgard. Edelgard. I did not think you would actually accept my request. Call it a win. Well then, what did you want to talk about? I will get straight to the point. Why did you start this war? There had to be a way to change things in your territory without the need for so many senseless casualties. It may be hard to believe, but this is the way that leads to the fewest casualties in the end. Don't you see? How could I? Countless people have already lost their lives in this conflict. The longer we took to revolt, the more victims this crooked world would have claimed. I weighed the victims of war against the victims of the world as it is now, and I chose the former. I believe that I have chosen the best path, the only path. Even after seeing the faces of those who have suffered the ravages of war, you would still force them to throw their lives away for the future? You are obsessively devoted to this war and deaf to the screams of its victims. You cannot change the cycle of the strong dominating the weak with a method like that. You're wrong. That very cycle is exactly what I have devoted my life and my power to destroying. If after all of this, you believe the weak will still be weak, that is only because they are too used to relying on others instead of on themselves. There is truth in your words. There is also falsities. Yes, perhaps someone as strong as you are can claim something like that. But you cannot force that belief onto others. People aren't as strong as you think they are. That is also correct. There are those who cannot live without their faith, and those who cannot go on once they have lost their reason for living. Your path will not be able to save them. It is the path of the strong, and so it could only benefit the strong. <laughs> so you consider me strong, do you? Even if one clings to their faith, the goddess will never answer them. Countless souls will be lost that way, living without purpose. And I can be counted among those who have died that way as well. But that's why I must change this world, on behalf of the silent and weak. And do you intend to become a goddess yourself? 
Will you steal the power to take action from the broken-hearted masses you claim to defend? The ones who can truly change the way of the world are not the rulers, but the people. Pushing your own sense of justice and your own ideals onto even one other person is nothing more than self-righteousness. Maybe it is self-righteousness, but it doesn't matter. Someone has to take action and put a stop to this world's endless, blood-stained history. Do you not believe in the power of the people to join together and rise up? Humans are weak creatures, but they are also creatures who help each other, support each other, and together find the right path. I have learned that humans are capable of all that from the Professor and from everyone in my life. I doubt a highborn person like yourself could know how the poor feel or what motivates them. This is nonsense, though I'm finally starting to understand how you feel. But that makes it even clearer to me that we can never fully understand each other. I feel the same. I finally understand. What you believe is right. Goodbye, Dimitri. Wait, Edelgard. There is something I must give you. This is for you. Use it to cut a path to the future you wish for. And I will rise up to meet you there. El? <sighs> Her dagger. El! So it's true. You're really going away? Going back home? There's nothing I can do about it. It's all happening so fast. I'm as surprised as you are. Oh. Um, here. I, I want you to have this. El, listen to me. No matter how hard things get, you can't give in, okay? You've got to cut a path to the future you wish for, no matter what. It's... a dagger? Why would you give me something like this? Oh, um... I'm sorry. I couldn't think of anything better to give you. Edelgard, what are you doing? It's time to go. Hurry and get in the carriage. Oh, I... I'm sorry, Uncle. I have to go now. Goodbye, Dimitri. I... I remember now. You gave me a dagger all those years ago. <laughs> I'm still sorry about that. I should have given you something that would have made you happier. Perhaps. At the time, I was quite flustered by such a dangerous gift. I left without giving you a proper response, and that was the last time we saw each other. True. It is a sweet memory, with a bitter ending. Well, the last time you saw each other before going to the Academy... I'm afraid it will do no good to reminisce, Dimitri. That girl you knew back then is gone. As good as dead. But... I'll tell you now what I wasn't able to tell you back then. Thank you, my dear forgotten friend. Because of you, I never lost my heart. As for the future, that will be decided in battle. King of Fargus, as the Emperor, I shall await your arrival in Inbar. That was something. The cemetery. Gerald's grave. As well as his Sorry. mother's. Sorry. It looks like I'm going to have to leave you now. One day, I hope you'll give this ring to someone you love as well as I love her. Someone I love. Mercedes is the only one I can support that with. So, Mercedes it is. I do like Mercedes. Sure. I'm gonna end this one here. Thank you all for watching. Join me next time on Fire Emblem Three Houses as we approach our final battle, the end to this war.
Edelgard von Helsing versus Dimitri. Uh, I can't remember his name, his last name. Well, I kind of ruined that moment. I'm the Dark Seraph, signing off.